Hello, welcome to Toppy TV. We are continuing with our end of season review. The Premier League season is finished. Uh, we did our Premier League review the season as a whole, so don't check that out if you haven't. Uh, but we have moved on to the defence. We're going to have, have a look back at how we feel mm. the defence has done this season. And um, obviously Everton, the fourth or fifth best defensive record in the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 13 clean sheets for the goalkeeper. And... Let's be honest, before we break each player down, that was the reason why Everton stayed in the Premier League, really, wasn't it? How good defensively we were, because we weren't great offensively. No, it was what, it's literally the foundations mm. of of anything good we've done this season has come from the back. Um, obviously, we know the goal scoring, and we'll obviously be talking about that in another video. But it's what the manager has obviously worked really, really hard on. Um you know, defensively set and the set pieces being really tough to score against, um, having good shape, making sure everyone knows their job, and obviously bringing Jared uh, Jared Brampwaite into that. You know, into, I think it was what three game into the third, third game, game yeah. made a made a massive difference, and it really had a balance. And for most of the season, you know, uh, four out of the five of those players picked themselves. It was only really that right back position, which was really strange because we ended up having four different right backs during the season. Those other three positions were quite solid, and there was a consistency. And I did, I do think that was a real part of it. There was a consistency all the way through the season, um, and and yet the right back position, four different players played in, and we never seemed to have any consistency that in that position during the season. So, um, and in fact, I think we had probably a f we had five players who played that position as well because you we had you know. Um, Garner, who played, who played, mm. you know, some part at right back as well. So to have th have those other players having so such good consistency, and then having that one one area makes it very very strange. But um, no, a brilliant season, and obviously all manufactured by the manager. Yeah, I mean he does like to build from a solid base. That's what he's. That's his philosophy, isn't it? Really start with the defence, and they proved it because they were very very solid and together. Yeah, there was, you know, a few blips throughout the season. Obviously, Aston Villa was, was really poor. Wolves was really poor. Chelsea was really poor. Those three away games. Yeah. But in general, Everton were in most of the other games. Um, mm. <clears throat> mainly because the defence was so good. And, and obviously, a key component of that, and it's just actually won Everton's Player of the Year award, <laughs> is the goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford. So we're going to have a look at Jordan Pickford's numbers on the screen now. Here we go. Thirty-eight games <clears throat> conceded there. Uh, One point three per game. Saves three point two per game. Uh, Seventy percent save ratio. He's actually above that overall. He's got seventy-three percent save ratio. I think one error leading to goals, and he had thirteen clean sheets. Is heat match interesting? It is really uh, interesting, isn't it? it? The way he pushes, he's taking free kicks. pushes out to the halfway line, yeah, yeah for those free um, kicks. But overall, very, very good season from Jordan Pick for 13 clean mm. sheets. He did have his moments, you know, Chelsea away. He had a, didn't have one of his better days, but no, no, in know. general, he's been a big reason why Everton are still playing Premier League football over the last few years, really, hasn't he? I think this is his best season in Everton shirt. Okay. I think he's made, in other seasons, made more outstanding saves. You know, mm. you go back... Um, a couple of years ago, the likes of the, the likes of the save in the Chelsea game mm. and things like that. I think this year he's had a more complete season. Yeah, more well-rounded, as you said. One mistake, you know, that was with his feet. Mm. Um, of course, he's not blamed. You know, there have been goals where you can look at him and go, you know, I think there was one. There was one down at Tottenham, wasn't there? And you think could he have pushed it out mm. to another place? But just, but I just think in general, I think he's had a more consistent. Um, and a more rounded season than we've seen them before. And I think there's been, you know, you've seen people on the outside of Evan actually acknowledging that as well, mm. that he has had that this season. Um, and he's, there's, a more much, there's a maturity about him as well. Yeah, he definitely. doesn't make those silly errors anymore. Mm. Yeah, his kicking, for the most part, is, is pretty good. Mm. He still has his little hectic moments, which have always sort of encapsulated his Everton career, but... They've got fewer and fewer and fewer as the years have gone by. Um, obviously, we all know that there was a little spell where, for you know, a few years back, where he, they seem to be really catching up with him. But he seems to have calmed down as, as as you would imagine, as a human being, and has matured massively. And um, 
Yeah, and I think you know he's grabbing the attention of people on the outside of Everton transfer wise as well. Obviously, he seems very settled at Everton, and he's you know he's going to go into the Euros in really good form as well. So England have got a good keeper there as well. Whether people have doubts about him or not, he's he's definitely the best English goalkeeper. Yeah, by by some distance as well, in my opinion, he has had a very very good season as a sofa score rating of seven point two one, which is very good. That's what they've given over the season. Obviously, the 13 clean sheets. He's key with our set pieces as well into the penalty mm -hmm. area, isn't he? Like you said. And yeah, he's done well and, uh, you know, really, really, you know, strong base from which we start. And obviously, loves it at Everton. Um, mm -hmm. And has come out, you know, and, and said, looking forward to building on it for next mm -hmm. season and all that. So it's good that he is settled and obviously we wish him all the best going off to the Euros mm -hmm. now with England and we'll see how well he does over there. Uh, moving on into the defence, then we're going to begin with one of our centre-backs and it is, for me, Mr Dependable, mm -hmm. James Tarkovsky, who has been a tremendous signing, free transfer from Burnley, been absolutely brilliant. Let's have a look at his numbers. There's his heat map. He's everywhere. Uh, games 38, one goal. Should do more better scoring goals, in my opinion, but there you go. Uh, 4.9 ball recoveries per game. One error that has led to a goal. Obviously, he's been played in every one of those games where Everton did get a clean sheet. And for a free transfer for two mm -hmm. seasons, he's played every minute of every game, bar going off for about 20 seconds yeah. against Sheffield United with the concussion. I think technically he has played every but minutes every game because he's played in the 90 minutes. Yeah, so he's been an outstanding signing for Everton, hasn't he? Mr Dependable, yeah. Everton have always had a history of having those kind of centre-backs, <clears> which <throat> sort of got broke up in the last few years, um, not having just that one player. But I think, axe, man, yeah. I think this year, certainly again, he showed it again and is massive been a massive you know it's mad i remember when we brought when we were looking at bringing him in and there'd been some rumors of what he may may or may not have been in and everything if he did mm -hmm. sign and a lot of people uh balked at that for a 29 year old but he coming in on a free transfer and the amount of games he played now dependable is and just his levels of tenacity mm -hmm. and wanting to defend as well which isn't always a trait now no. with with the modern era of defenders how everyone wants to play it out from the back he is very much an old school defender mm -hmm. um and it's again we talked about pickford playing for england it's actually mad that this fella mm -hmm. doesn't get recognized yeah, and hasn't yeah. played for england where others have um i actually seen a comment from a burnley fan basically saying it all you know goes back to one mistake he made in an England game under Gareth Southgate, and it's like, uh, you know, this You're person's done. words, not mine, mm -hmm. that Southgate has held a grudge ever since. Um, and that just seems really strange when you see some of the players who are in the England squad, because he is dependable. He will run through brick walls. Mm -hmm. He does have that almost old-school British bulldog thing yeah, about him, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the what people want anymore. Defenders defend them, which is, which is weird. So, um, and he, again, you're talking about, like, the, the parts that hold your team together. You know, he's our de facto captain with mm. Chame, obviously with James not playing as many games. And he really does. And he and he's there and we've seen he like loves winding up the opposition. He loves <laughs> getting in the faces. Because let's be honest, like nobody's nobody's Mess getting into Archie's face. No, nobody's no getting one. in his face. No, he's a machine, um, isn't he? They only have to look at him and, <laughs> and you can tell he's he's got he's got everything um that that you, you want from it from an Everton centre back. And you don't want when you're trying to square yeah, up to yeah. someone. Yeah. Um, his sofa score rating seven point three two, which is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, like we've just said, played every every minute of every game. His passing accuracy seventy eight percent, and considering mm -hmm. he does hit the long switch, yeah, yeah. that is quite yeah. high, isn't it? I mean, just looking at his defensive numbers, we've talked about clean sheets there, interceptions per game one point five, tackles per game one point six, which yeah. is quite high for a centre back making the tackle. Um, as we said, 4.9 ball recoveries, dribble past 0.6 per mm. game. Very difficult to get yeah. past. Averages around five clearances per game as well. He very rarely lets himself down. I can only really mm. think of like the Wolves game where everyone was basically. And Chad didn't think at Chelsea. Well, that was going to come on to no. Chelsea. In the Chelsea game, there was a there was a bit of an immature side of him came out mm. where he just wanted to go around <clears> kicking people yeah, because of the frustration. Yeah. Um, which I think. 
as as the captain you have to hold yourself to a slightly higher level mm. and there's no real room for that yeah um, i don't think there's much room for it anyway but i just thought on that night he was he was very immature lost and, his head, didn't he? yeah he massively lost his head and it happens it happens once mm. in a while and i think mm. the whole team that night you mentioned pickford that's when he made his, his one mistake i think the whole team lost their heads that night so he can be forgiven for that and he's also started in a documentary where th certain things were said about him and his him and his wife. Well, his wife said she likes shagging. That's basically fair it. Play, I mean, fair play, I mean, fair play. And the proof was in the pudding at hey, the end of the season. There you go. Well, there you go, yeah. I mean, you know, just had a, a baby, so yeah. congratulations to that. You know, he hit, he hit the back of the net. He certainly did. He certainly did. Uh, there you go. He's had a great season for Everton. Um, like you said, I think he's a little bit unlucky not to no. have been called into the 33-man squad, Gareth yeah, Solke, so just for them to have a look at him. Yeah. But listen, it is what it is. Yeah. And have a nice there was summer. I seen Michael Ball saying the other day, I'm not, you know, don't know where he's got it from, but said he, he'd been injured the last few weeks and he had a couple of injections to play. Because mm. uh, he, he, but even though Everton was safe, so that tells you how. Oh yeah. Like, you know that he wants to loves playing for Everton and and we wants to go out and. I think when you've played for the clubs he's played for, playing for Everton again is that different level. It's the big thing. It's the it? different level, and, and he's hope... loving being captain. Yeah, isn't? exactly. Yeah. It seems like a great character. So. Fair play to him. It is defensive partner who started the season unsure. I think of mm. how we, you know, how this season would go. Spent last season on loan at PSV. A lot of interest in him in the summer. Yeah. Had to wait till the third Premier League game mm. to get a start to get in. He came in in that game. I don't still lost the game. He lost to Wolves, uh, but he he come in and never looked back. And it is of course Jared Brantwaite yeah. who has had. A tremendous season. These are his numbers. Let's have a look. 35 Premier League games. The only other one he missed, he was suspended for at Burnley, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Um, three goals he scored, 5.2 ball recoveries per game. Zero errors leading to a goal and 12 clean sheets. Just missing that victory at Burnley. Mm -hmm. There's his heat map predominantly on the left, of course, yeah. as you'd expect. Uh, his sofa score rating for the season, 7.07, which again is good. What a season he's had for his first, yeah. like a breakout season. I know he played a few games for Everton in the Premier League over a few seasons. This was his proper breakout season mm. for Everton. He's absolutely tremendous. He is named in Gareth Southgate's 33-man mm. squad. I think a lot of people think he will go to the Euros as well, and rightly so. There's... Rumours Manchester City won him, Manchester United won him, uh, Real Madrid are looking at him, Carlo, price ranges from 60 to 85 mm. million. Most ever, <clears throat> probably all Evertonians don't want to see him sold. He's had an absolutely outstanding season, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been he's been brilliant. He obviously, it's crazy, isn't it? Because this, this last summer, sorry, he was in the squad for the England 21s mm -hmm. that won the tournament yeah. but he didn't really play I think he played one game when it was the third game in the group that he'd already won um, and it's crazy to think that where he's come from he obviously um, James Garner played in that tournament and I think at right back didn't he and, and, and Brantwick didn't start the season and the manager put it down to him playing in that tournament and not getting back But mm -hmm. and I don't know whether it was it felt like at the time didn't it that there was actually a little bit of fan pressure that that Mm. You know, was was saying to the manager, you know, you've got to because obviously it wasn't a good start to the season, and people were saying, why aren't you playing this? Like he played in the game, didn't he? The the, the friendly game at Goodison, and everyone thought, well, that's him nailed on to start mm -hmm. the season. And then Michael Keane started the season. It was a bit like, well, what are you doing? Mm. You've, got, pitch, you've got him in there. You've got him in the last friendly, but you're playing Michael Keane. It's like it's like the manager at the last minute just thought a better play safe. Mm. And then when we had the tough start, and obviously playing at Villa. The manager probably just thought, I've got to do something here to just change something up. And he did, and as you said, he never looked back. And he's it's not that 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 he's a good defender. He makes it look really easy as well. And he never he never Not that he's just a good defender. No, no, but he never gets pressurised. He mm. never feels pressure. So when you know we saw it away at Manchester City, and everyone that day would look, if you watch it on match of the day, would look at at Aylan Haaland. You know him trying to get the ball and falling over, and he looked he looked quite embarrassing. What people didn't see if he didn't watch the full game was how cool and calm he was, how he was getting the ball, how he was winning the ball in our box, and instead of just kicking it up the pitch, playing it to mm. someone, someone's feet just outside the box. Mm. Those little things that make a brilliant defender. Oh, now. Of course, yeah. And I think that was that's 
they're the things where maybe when people don't watch Everton, you know, when or every minute of every game like we mm -hmm. do, they won't see those moments. They'll just see little highlights packages and and stuff. And I think he just looks every bit of a leader himself at his age. Taki rubbing off him, and he scored some huge goals. And you know, he scored in the Merseyside derby to give Everton the lead. You know what I mean? And it's it doesn't phase him for a second. He doesn't ever look overexcited. He doesn't. He just. He looks very, very controlled and very, very calm. And again, the amount of bad games he's had, pff, one hand, if, you know, my only a couple of things. He's had a couple of moments in games, mm -hmm. of course. He hasn't. The Harlem one is one of those moments where you go, maybe he could have done it a different way. Maybe he could have cut across him mm -hmm. and pushed him wide rather than engaging the high up. Mm -hmm. But they're also things you learn by making those mistakes. You're not born with that knowledge um, about playing against, the, if not the best striker in the world, one mm -hmm. of them. And and that's where people will look at it, look at the whole picture. And he's just been absolutely superb. And Everton have got a real talent on their hands. And now, of course, they've got a real battle on their hands to try and, try and keep him or certainly get extract the maximum amount of money that they can for this player. Yeah, he, he's been superb. I mean, the, the Haaland one, yeah, he was a little bit naive going, trying to use his body against someone who's mm. that big. It is a case of just shepherd them out and, and that. That was an isolated moment. He was outstanding that day. Other than that, you know, he, he had a poor night at Chelsea, but they all did. And just mm -hmm. looking at how Sofa score had done it, you know, that his poor night at Chelsea dragged his score down mm -hmm. a little bit as well as it dragged most players down, really. He was that bad. But in general, outstanding, like you say, big goals, you know, equaliser against Spurs, goal in the derby, scored a bright, you know, these are big goals that he come up with and got Everton points ultimately. And, has played his part and absolutely outstanding and like you say, forced his way in was brilliant and is hopefully off the Euros. Mm. But um Yeah, well we'll have to wait and see what awaits us mm. with Jarrah Brantwaite. Hopefully he does remain at Goodison Park for next season. Hopefully Everton can get money in other ways and, and be able to withstand anything. But if if they can't, then they have to extract mm. every last penny really out of people who want to buy him. Uh, moving on to, we're going to go to left back because Michalenko basically was more steady than anyone else in that. <laughs> in the full back area, yeah, normally yeah. I go to the right back naturally. Um, we'll come on to that in a minute. But Vitaly Michalenko, let's have a look at his numbers for this season. Uh, 28 games played, two goals, uh, 5.1 ball recoveries per game, zero errors, leading to a goal. Clean sheets, I want to say nine. Yeah, and I'm right. Um, just can't see it on the screen. That was all. It's covered. Um, but he is someone who, I think it's fair to say, Ped has got better and better. And actually was having was in with a little bit of a shout for player of the year. He was, mm. obviously got injured against Liverpool and that was yeah. his season done. But someone who was injured at the start, because yeah. Ashley Young started at left back, yeah. of course. But when he got in, we, we talked about, you know, he's a very capable Defender, mm. he's a good defender. He's good one v one. Offensively, is where his weakness is. But he, even this season, he has improved in that area. Obviously, scored a couple of goals as well, didn't he? In mm. succession, Brighton at home and Crystal Palace Gosh. away. Um, and I, I think he's got a little bit more to offer in that final third. I think sometimes he does put the brakes on. But he's had a really good season. Probably his best. No, it's easy. His best. I think he came he back from pre-season, and obviously, as you mentioned, there he missed the first month, didn't he? And, and um, when he came back, he looked physically a lot more developed mm. than he had done previously. And he looked a lot more confident in his own ability. Maybe he always looked, he had always had a very nervous look on his face, I he thought, does. when he played before. But I thought this year he, he stepped it up and mm. he's gone he's gone to a place where I didn't I didn't believe he could get to as mm -hmm. a player, I'd be in that all-round player who's confident in his own abilities. And as I said, the physical elements of that um, prove, you know, show that as well. He just looks fitter and mm -hmm. stronger and can go shoulder to shoulder with a lot of players, whereas before, beforehand he looked a little bit weak, mm -hmm. he looked a little bit timid. He didn't look like he quite belonged. Mm -hmm. Whereas I thought this season, as soon as he came in, he looked like that. And he he's one of those players that, certainly when he goes up against the best, really fancies himself in a one-on-one. Mm. -on -one. And that has that's that has been there. That was there last season as well. Mm. But I thought this season he really does do a good job against about against people who who you know who 
you fear a Salah or a Saka. He's had some... great games against Mo Salah. Yeah. Like, really, and really and good he, games. He, you know, and I think that, that confidence has is really helped him and helped everyone else and, and secured that position. And, yeah, I think the next stage of it will be, can he start getting up and down? Will the manager allow him to get up and down? Mm. Because I think what we saw towards the end of the season was Dwight McNeil's role starting to change slightly and becoming off the left and going inside more. If you had the rampage in left-back, someone who could get up and down and the manager trusted them to get up and down, then the, the, the space that creates for that mm. player... And it's when did he can do it. And it's not a case of him not being to do it. It's a case of him not being allowed to do mm. it at times. And then if he's not doing it all the time, then there's not that consistency. And when he gets it in the final third, what's he going to do with it? And how's he going to... How's 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 he? Is he just going to cross it? Is he going to play a little one-two? Whatever mm. that is. We've not seen anything like that develop because he's not really allowed to. So that'll be the next stage, maybe next season. And sadly, of course, he gets injured. He gets injured in, in, a, in a Michalenko fashion. He gets injured you know, defending and then playing on for another five, six, seven minutes. Mm. And then he goes off and you find out that he's, at, not only is he out for the rest of the season, but he potentially could miss the Euros. I mean, we don't know yet because he hasn't had an operation and it's all about settling down. But he played those remaining minutes. And I remember that moment that happened and I was like, don't take your boot off. Mm. Do not take your boot off. <laughs> And he didn't, and he played on, but he didn't come out for yeah, the second yeah. half. But that shows the bravery side of him. The mm -hmm. lad will and is prepared um, to, to run through brick walls mm. for us again and it's such an imp important asset for the team yeah he's had a great season 6.96 is a is sofa score rate just under seven dragged down by the chelsea game <laughs> uh, as a lot of them were um just looking through you know past an accuracy 75 percent big chances created two that's something he's got to work on for me uh, mm. Two and a half tackles per game, yeah. five ball recovery, zero errors leading yeah. to goals. I think that is a key mm. one. Uh, we're going to move on to, let's start with our captain. Uh, he played 12 Premier League games this season, zero goals, uh, but had 3.3 ball recoveries per game. Uh, one error leading to goals. And is that three clean sheets? Yeah. Three clean sheets. Mm. There's his heat map. Seamus, who was being offered another year, uh, very much a bit par player this season, which is what you'd expect at his age now, just being part of the squad. Well, after the injury as well, and from he, last season. The injury, which obviously at Leicester, it looked bad at the time. Then they were like, we didn't, he said himself, he didn't know whether he was ever going to play in the Premier League yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, have you, what are your thoughts on Seamus this season? It's been difficult, hasn't it? And it's about getting what you can out the player now. I'd be lying if I was sitting here think, saying, you know, Oh, he's, he's still got loads to give and all that because cause I just don't think he has. I just don't think he has got... What he needs is... what he need, If he is going to sign, what he needs is a really good pre-season, mm. fitness-wise, yeah. and come back for the next for next season. Mm. But obviously, as a bit part player, yeah. someone who fills in, as someone who, uh, you know, starts in some games, maybe, the, you know, and, and other games comes on and gives us some... Gives you know a little bit more defensive stability or whatever it is, but he's not a starter anymore, and he shouldn't be a starter in this team. And it's all about that experience, and it is all about the stuff that happens off the pitch as well. Mm -hmm. um, James Tarkowski he recently said he's like a fan who mm -hmm. plays for Everton, and that's so important right now yeah. with what's going on at the football club. Mm -hmm. It needs that stability all the way through, and also it needs somebody to pass the baton on to the next mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And I think he's already done that in many ways. But I think you need someone there. And, you know, who knows you, how many plays are going to come into Everton this season. But it's important that you have that person every day who drives the standards. Mm -hmm. You know, look at what Seamus doing. Look, look, look at what Seamus doing. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the most experienced people. I'd like to, we're going to say he's most the oldest, but obviously he's not. Um, but look what he's doing every day in the gym. Look what he's doing every day on the train. Listen pitch. to what he's saying. He's 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 doing that now, and he's mm. he's in the twilight of his career. And it's really important you have those people who pass the baton on to people and and explain to people what Everton is all about. And mm. they, we don't do that here, you know, or, or yeah, whatever yeah. that is. You know, we don't mess about here. Mm. This is what we do. And sometimes the manager can say that it doesn't always cut through to players. But yeah. I think when another player is doing it and someone who can grab hold of you and say, hey, we don't do that here. Mm. Well, this this is what we do at Everton Football Club. You might think on the outside, this is your what you think Everton Football mm. Club. It's not. Mm. This is Everton Football Club. 
And that's what Seamus Coleman does. He drives the standards. And for no other reason, that's why you want him in the club next season. Mm. And he will play. And as I said, a pre-season is hugely important. Yeah. Because obviously he didn't have one last year. And when he did come back, he played. And then, he it, it, you know, it, it, it flares up again. Another injury because you haven't played for so long. And it's it's been really difficult. And I'm sure that'll all be on his mind at the moment. But, I, you know, I would love to see Seamus Coleman pull the shirt on for at least another season. Um, it, it, it's vitally important. Yeah, I think like you've said, all the, all the other stuff, the instilling of, of the values mm. and the standards, being a standard bearer, being knowing what Everton Football Club means to him and the way other people speak about him, you know, massively praised. Mm. Um, he'll go down as a an Everton icon. Yeah. Say legend because the centre, you win things, legend's not his fault. He's someone who definitely deserves to win something. He might just creep into that well, legend. He might do, he but might what, just, what I mean is he's certainly an Everton icon yeah. because of the way he is, what he's done, but obviously the money we paid for him, the standards he sets, and everyone you hear speak about him yeah. just has got nothing but good. Met him a few times, spoke to him a few times. Unbelievable fella, just a great fella. Mm -hmm. Just down to it, lovely family man but goes in and sets those standards for yeah. us as Evertonians uh, 6.68 he was given yeah. on sofa score 7 starts um, mm. dribble pass 0.4 times a game yeah, which yeah. shows you he's still a very good defender yeah. and I think you're right to think a good pre-season and then use him sparingly mm. if not having to ask him to, to do it each game no. then I think he's still a valuable asset yeah. to you and, and that, like he said everything else that goes with it so uh, it'd be great to see Seamus at Goodison again uh, one player who seemed to be out the loop mm. and seemed to be heading towards the exit door is Ben Godfrey yeah. and Ben Godfrey who has come into Everton as a centre back even though he was a defensive midfield player and then Norwich put him at centre back mm. for a year and we bought him and He's never really grabbed hold at centre back. No. He looks like he's got the attributes. He's quick, he's powerful. He's just never been able to nail a centre back position down. Mm -hmm. He's turned into a really good utility player, as in, yeah. you know, an auxiliary yeah, left yeah. back or right back. But you know what? Right back performances, he's mm -hmm. had some real strong ones. Let's have a look at Ben's numbers from the season 15 games. Um, this season, zero goals, three ball recoveries per game. Zero errors leading to a goal was involved in games that Everton kept four clean sheets. He's made two unbelievable clearances that I can think of. One at Burnley, which kept the clean sheet before Christmas, which the lad was about to tap in, and uh, he got back and cleared it. And the um, at Goodison rather mm -hmm. when the ball got rolled across and it looked like Nunes had a tap and he came from nowhere to clear. He's probably had lots. There was more. another one as well, wasn't there? But the he's out the uh, was that thingy again. I can't remember Brentford or Forest maybe, yeah. but he, he's been he's to me. I thought he, he, I was edging towards he's gonna leave. There's nothing really happening for him here now. I think he's ahead of Keane and Colm, uh, Keane and Holgate for me at centre back. Even even though I still think he's mm. a better full back, but right now, you know, you'd say that's some real. No, I, th I think he was he was the forgotten man, and it mm. did look like it did look like he would be heading out, and then mm. obviously the Burnley game with. Uh, when we went to three at the back, he really did put a shift in that mm -hmm. night and sort of just no fuss, no frills, done the job. And then the second it, half of the season, we've seen that a few times. Mm -hmm. him come in, come in, do a job, no frills, pace, um, strength. Yeah. Just has got a fantastic work ethic as well. Yeah. Doesn't ever want to be beaten by anyone. Listen, he's got his frailties, he's not great in the air. And we've seen that a couple of times, missing headers and leading to goals, sadly. So it's you know, it's not all not all brilliant. But as a utility team, a player in a team or a squad, sorry, that is so small and you need players who can shift positions, he's been vitally important. Mm. And I, I think the biggest credit that I, well the biggest thing I, I, you know, towards the end of the season there was games where it was like he should be starting over Seamus Coleman, you know, anyway. Um and the managers chose experience over over the over the pace and the power, but um, no, I thought he had a, a good second half of the season and reliable. Just proved himself as a reliable player. I think that's that's the most important. It's thing. Frustrating that 
without being too disrespectful to him. He's not great going forward. He's got the pace yeah. and he's powerful enough Get into areas. If that was one area, I'd love him to work on in pre-season. Yeah. It would be just getting balls into the box, yeah. even if he's just whacking them across, but getting into those areas, making <clears> the <throat> runs. Because yeah. sometimes he gets in good positions and then he delays because he's not comfortable in those areas. Mm. But that's just the one thing. But you're right, he's gone in and you look at him and think, you know, 26 now. He's at that age where mm. he's got to be putting it, putting it down. But you look at Everton and you go, Nathan Patterson, not sure, you know, Ashley Young's 38, he'll be 39, whatever, or 39 now, rather. So he's not the future, of, yeah. You know, so Ben Godfrey, if he could improve that, and listen, Sean Dyke might be mm -hmm. like, I'm happy having a defensive right back, yeah. Um, that's one area, but Ben Godfrey, 6.87 <coughs> is so for yeah. score rate right, and 13 starts. Um, just some of his other numbers there, he just comes in and does a job, yeah. Comes in, does a job, goes back out again. Dribble pass per game, just less than once per game. So maybe, you know, that it's still less than once mm -hmm. per game. Um, no errors leading to goals, which is fine. Com committed the penalty, can see the penalty at Old Trafford. That was a bit naive. He's got to dive in, and he's got to stay in his feet there. But three ball recoveries per game, two yeah. tackles per game has been, you know, was mm -hmm. done very well. And like you said, Thought he was on his way out. Now I look and think, you know what? Maybe he has got a bit of a future there. Mm -hmm. Just but he's only got thirteen months left yeah. on his Everton contract at the moment. So that's I'd, another I'd one. I think Everton will offer him another contract. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and then see and where he, I he think got. he'd sign it. Um, Michael Keane. Yeah. If I was Ned, I would have done Ashley Young. And yeah, I'd, I'd have done Ashley. But he's lined Michael Keane up. So yeah. let's go to Keane. Uh, Michael Keane, who started the season in the side. I mean, he finished the season and then was left out for the last couple of games. He ended up, when you were at Wolves, coming on as a striker. Yeah, yeah. And obviously was out the, the mm. you know, Connor Cody coming for the Bournemouth game. And Keane looked, a lot of people thought he would leave last mm. summer. Um, but Sean Dyke... Player, wasn't he player X? He was player X, he was trying to sell apparently, and but he ended up starting the season. But yeah. he's played nine Premier League games this yeah. season. Uh, one goal, uh, scored at Burnley, didn't he? Uh, ball recovery is 2.9 per game, one error leading to goals, one clean sheet. He has found, Michael has found himself in the team and then played himself out the team and has had to just become a bit part player for the season. And I think if you're him, if I'm him now, I want out of Everton this summer because yeah. at his age, he'll want to go and he's still a dependent. You know, he can go and play in the Premier League. There's a lot of clubs. I just think where he is at Everton now, mm -hmm. the time's probably right for everybody if he goes and, and moves on. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, he's, he's, he's not good enough. You know, he's, he's just not good enough. And I think the difference between him and, say, Jared Brantwaite is, is Jared Brantwaite's calmness? Michael Keane mm. is erratic. Um and he gets he gets erratic during the game. Mm. And I think that's the that's the biggest thing. Um I think don't get me wrong, Brantwaite's a much better player all round anyway. But he's just got that he just he, he creates situations and scenarios where it it just everything just becomes a little bit out of out of kilter mm. and um <clears throat> you know he he said, you know, he came in for the Burnley game as well, and obviously mm -hmm. defended well and scored the goal. Did, so again, yeah. could be reliable, but we haven't had to break up that partnership, and that's been the most important thing. Mm. Um, I mean, he did come on against Brentford up front. I was going to say some of his appearances have been just which was really interesting. <clears throat> um, that showed you I think that where we were. He that came day. on against Luton as a striker. Yeah, as well. yeah. I mean, listen, I think this is the time now for him to to move on. Mm. Uh, this is the time for him to start a new chapter. I think. Sitting on the bench and another. If we if he was to play next season for Everton, that would show you that Everton would in had, had a pet, terrible summer. As far as I'm concerned, it would prove the other terrible summer. Well, he's, he's out not... the team, and the manager's clearly made the decision that he doesn't see no, him as not, a starting not, centre back. So it's not good enough for Everton. For him, it's not. It's not good enough, and and that's that's where we are right now. He's only started four games. Mm. I think when you're 31, and you're only starting four games across a Premier mm. League season, I think you realise that. And Everton, don't forget, Everton a couple of times have been ready to let him go. And yeah, yeah. It just hasn't happened. But <laughs> um, probably for his own sake, he would be better uh, moving on and getting getting back in 18, mm -hmm. fresh start, getting in, 
and build them from there because uh, you know yeah. just that that's just the way it is uh, moving on Nathan Patterson onto right back mm. um, Nathan's 20 games this season zero goals which is an area. none of these players have any assists I don't know, Ned hasn't put them on. I'll have a look. But Patterson, I mean, I can think back to day one when he should have scored against Fulham when he hit the crossbar. Mm. Should have buried it. Uh, three ball recoveries a game, zero errors leading to a goal, you know, despite what some people say about him. Uh, two clean sheets. I I like Nathan Patterson, I think. Um, I think there's a player in there. I do agree, he's never... He's never been a hundred percent convincing. Where you're like, he has got to be our right back. I mm. definitely see a player in there. I just think, I just think at the moment he's he's caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. I think he's a better attacking fullback. He's not a brilliant defender, mm. but I think the manager puts more stock in defending than going forward, and therefore he's not encouraged to do the thing he's good at. I don't think he's a natural defender, and and you see that he's not a natural mm. defender. I think you see the, the 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 cogs in his mind. But Seamus wasn't, was he? No, no. But I'm saying, but, Sheam, but that we Seamus was a different era. Seamus was mm. when we we pushed up and we had the mm. full backs went high. Um, he doesn't. The manager doesn't want what he offers, and that's just clear as day. Mm. And he's not. He he look he. He struggles defending because he's not. He just it's just not natural to him. It just mm. doesn't look natural to him. Mm. He's more of a wing back than if he's anything. Yeah, he had two assists this season. Yeah. Nathan Patterson. He just he just yeah one Sheffield United wasn't mm. it? He just doesn't look. He doesn't look comfortable in that position, and he looks like it's all you can see, it. and and that's where that's where the problem is. It's horses for courses, isn't it? If he was if we were if the manager wants an attack and fullback. He could grow into that position, mm. but he's never had a chance to do that, and that's it stunted his development. And mm. I feel really sorry for him now. He's going to miss the Euros coming on at Chelsea in a game that we that we were already that was already over. Mm. And I'm not really sure why the manager put him on that night, and he got an injury and he's going to miss the Euros. And I think that I just think that's that's the kind of look that lads had since he signed for yeah, Everton. He's had bad. He has had bad luck. Oh, there's someone put a case on him or something mm. and he signed but uh, he has had a bit of a And do you have to make a decision about him? Mm. Do you have to make a decision whether he's ever going to be that player and if he's not then you have to get rid of him. You have to let his career flourish somewhere else then. Mm. Created three big chances. Uh, yeah, like I say, two assists, 73% passing accuracy, two clean sheets, uh, 1.7 tackles per game, three ball recoveries mm. per game, um, clearances 1.4, zero errors leading to a goal. Dribble past just over once per game. Um, there's a mixed bag there, mm. but we've, we have got to make a decision. Yeah. I do think there's a player in there, but the, we have to decide is the manager prepared to lose a little bit of that defensive mm. tightness with him to get more offensively from him. If he's not, we have a decision to make mm. whether we, we cash in on him or whatever Absolutely. and get a more, you know, a full back that doesn't go forward. I don't know. Mm. Uh, Ashley Young. Splits a lot of people's he opinion. Does. Signed on a free transfer, age 38. Played 31 games for Everton. Mm. Uh, zero goals. 3.9 ball recoveries per game. Scored in the League Cup, though. Did score in the League Cup. Uh, three errors leading to goals. Clean sheet six. Heat map everywhere. Yeah. Being offered a new one-year deal. Staying as revealed on a radio that mm. talks about sports. Mm. He said he was uh, going to stay. Yeah. Where Everton are right now in terms of finances and the club up in the air and all that, probably a sensible decision to have a utility player mm. still there, as long as hopefully the wages aren't crazy, which I don't think they are now. Um, how do you sum his season up? Because I think there's been games when he's been excellent, yeah. there's been games when he's been he's looked 30 Nine. <laughs> and there's been a lot of games where he's actually been solid and not everyone sees it. I, I think saying that, that though, what he did on Sunday in the last minute was uh, was really, really poor. I think 31 games tells you everything you need to know. Mm. Is that he's quite reliable. Yeah. He can play right back, left back, right midfield. Mm. He can play left midfield if you want him. He could probably play centre midfield if you want him to, but I wouldn't I wouldn't try it. Mm. 
But I just think the amount of games there shows his importance. Yeah, yeah. That's there's whether people like him or not. And yes, he takes takes risks, stupid risks that he needs to cut out. Mm. He needs to cut down on. But th- you're talking about a player who's got loads of experience. Yeah. So I'm gonna play to come on at half time in the Mayside Derby, mm-hmm. one nil up and, and, the job, yeah. and done the job. You're talking about a player who, who just adds that professionalism. And yeah, yeah, loads of people might think he's terrible and mightn't want him. But that's just not where Everton are right now. Yeah, but he's not terrible. That's no, the he's thing. not terrible. He, that's that's what I'm thing. saying. He's not terrible. Mm. He's someone that I have stuck my neck out quite a few times for because I believe that where we are right now, it's important to have a player like that. Mm-hmm. You know, Michael Keane didn't play 31 times, did he? You know, other players, uh, Jer- but uh, Godfrey didn't play 31 times. Mm-hmm. You know, he's played 31 times, and it's <laughs> his flexibility. It's hugely important, mm-hmm. and as I said, you know, and if the, you don't, well, you you would never want to say to him, "Oh, you should be the, the starter here, no. or the starter there." But at the beginning of the season, when there was no Michalenko, he done the job, mm-hmm. and then Michalenko come back. Mm-hmm. At times when there's been no other right back, he's done the job there. He's done the job at right midfield. He's filled in wherever we've needed yeah, him to do yeah. without any fuss, mm-hmm. without any fanfare. And I think that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask. Mm-hmm. That's where we are right now as a football club. Yeah. That's not his fault. Um, and he, you know, he's a player who, mm. who wants it. Mm. He's d- desperate to stay in football. Mm. That means you have to keep your standards really high and pass them on to the next person. Mm. So I have no problem with him. I think he's, he has made daft mistakes, mm. as you mentioned, the Arsenal. And then you look at the game with the Forest game where he took risks. Mm. Of course he has. But Liverpool away. Well, Liverpool away was stupid, and that was stupid from the manager for not seeing that yeah. as well for not taking him off when he was on a yellow card. He was never going to win that battle and he was going to be played on all day. And the manager has, has to, does have to look at things like that yeah. now and again. Um, you hope next season he plays less games, mm. but he'll be there to contribute if he needs to be. Mm. And if Everton get themselves up out of this mess with him right now, then you don't you wouldn't need to play like Ashley Young. Mm. But right now we do need him. Mm. And I think people have got to remember that. And the thing is, he's he's can play right midfield, left midfield, yeah. and he's a he's a very good sub. If you yeah. can get to the stage where he's only a sub for a lot of the games, mm-hmm. he's a good fella to put on with twenty minutes left and go go and do that job for yeah, me. Yeah. Knows the game inside out, doesn't he? His uh, his sofa score six point six eight. Um, just having a look, expected assists one point four three. So people have let him down on the assists, created two mm-hmm. big chances. Defenders, six clean sheets, tackles 1.7 per game, dribble pass less than once per mm. game, uh, chances creator per game, 1.5. Mm. <clears throat> Three errors leading to goal, we've said that. I mean, he has made some silly errors. Uh, penalties conceded once, but in general, five yellow cards. Um, yeah, he's, he's done all right, and that's where we are. So, I mean, all of those p- players have contributed one way or the other to Everton, mm. haven't a very good defensive record yeah. this season. If you're looking at it, you'd go, it'd be great to keep the goalkeeper, the left-back, the two centre-backs together, sort the right-back position out. Mm. Then you'd think, well, we'll have a, we'll have a, a strong basis to go mm. from next season. Yeah. But that's been Everton's, for me, that's been Everton's key area this season. Yeah. And they deserve, all of them deserve credit for in one way or the other. So, And the manager for getting them into that unit. So let us know what you think in the comments section below. Who? Who was your player of the year? Um, and what are your thoughts? Anything we've discussed here? I, I'm, I'm, I'm predicting there'll be quite a few contradictory views on Ashley Young yeah, in yeah. the comments. But hey, all views are welcome. Thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. If you want to become a Toppy TV Premier member, the link is in the description. The QR code's on the screen now. See you later.